This podcast is rated S for spoilers. Listener discretion is advised. Don't forget to view our spoiler-free companion video on our Half Past Podcast channel on YouTube. Fast Podcast. This is episode 50, the movie review of Ben Hur. We will also be discussing the Magnificent Seven trailer. I'm Graham Ricks, and here with me is my friend and co pilot, Ian Jones. Episode 5 0. 5 0, man. Wow. Did you think we'd get this far? I feel like some people <laughs> owe us money. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there are some bets that maybe we should be <laughs> cashing in on, but I didn't keep a list. I know, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so great man i mean it, it it feels good to know that we're hitting 50 episodes it's amazing how long it's been it's just so crazy <laughs> and, and like every time i think um, about it like i've been geeking out about it for a while now because like we decided to postpone it you know because we were right, gonna uh, do pete's dragon and we like postponed it to get this one done. And we still don't have any special celebration thing. But <laughs> <laughs> that's not really how we roll anyway. But the thing is, it's like it's just such a great <laughs> it's just a great feeling to know that you hit the big five oh. It's, it it's awesome. <laughs> Especially when you think about like the amount of time. Oh too. Yeah. Like, There's a know, lot of time. It, right. It's just you know, it's that's well over a year's worth of watching movies, and yes. it's it's actually been more than that, really, if you think about yeah some of the ones that didn't end up going because yes. we were just like <laughs> no. Just... <laughs> yep, there's definitely some in there where we've like there's even like a, I think there's a couple episodes that I'm sure we recorded and never released. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so right. it's it's been fun. It's been a fun fifty episodes, and I hope we can get fifty more. And then let's just blow this popsicle stand. <laughs> Ooh, I like that idea. Hmm. Oh, that's great. Let's blow this popsicle stand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mm. after we got our little celebration thing done. The trailer for this week is Magnificent Seven. And so I am actually... the per Well, the first thing I want to say is the thing that's funny about this movie is it is a... It's a remake of the Old West style version of Seven Samurai that Akira Kurosawa did back in like the 50s. And then you had the Magnificent Seven that was in like the 60s. And so... I actually like both versions of those movies. And so I'm really excited about seeing this one also. But the thing that sets this one apart is because it's a modern, like, take on this. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's got that new school feel to it because it looks like it's just going to be a ton of fun. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But... Because the other ones, hmm. like Seven Samurai and Magnificent Seven, are very serious movies. I but this I, one just looks like a ton of fun. I think that might just be because of Chris Pratt. Yes, we'll, exactly, we'll though, right? <laughs> because the actual movie may not be a ton of fun. Well, that's, we'll have to you see know, what it happens. It could be just really serious. And, it could be, um, but I think that... I personally think that Chris Pratt's really good at doing... Even though serious stuff is happening, him being able, like, he just has the charm that kind of, like, tones everything back down and brings it right. back to earth. And so I think it's really good that that he's in it and that they've chosen him. And I'm just excited about the, uh, the director, too, because Antoine Fuqua, I always like him also. I know there's a lot of people didn't like King Arthur, but <laughs> mm -hmm. he did that one and he did Training Day and he also did The Equalizer, which is why he's using Denzel Washington and he works with him a lot. But the thing that I think that's really good about this movie is the cast. Like, I thought the cast was like a really good selection other than I know you can't stand Peter Sarsgaard. Right? No, I can't. Is that <laughs> that's the bad guy, right? I think so. Mm, I think he's gonna be. We've the bad had guy this discussion something. about him before. Like, yes. 
Like, he and Edward Norton are consistently miscast <laughs> in movies because they're, like, miscast as tough guys, and you can't have a tough guy with a lisp unless he's Samuel L. Jackson. But, like, <laughs> the movie has to be in on the joke. Yes. You know, like in like in Kingsman. But, like, everyone takes him seriously, yeah. and he's, like, super effeminate. And yes. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. It's just they... It's just that they the treat characters, him like he, like he isn't. Yes, <laughs> like, like, like the characters know? they have in play are not really effeminate type characters. Right. Yeah. Which, it's... to be honest, I think I think he's effective enough to where he could be like a bad guy. And if he's just an effeminate bad guy, then who cares, right? Like I okay. think he has the traits but, where he could. Do but they that. don't really ever do it like that. No, they don't like, cast like him like that it way. isn't like it isn't ever written that way no it's not so like i totally think he could do a role like that if he wanted to easily if they if you know that's again that's kind of writing a role for an actor if you really want peter sarskar that bad <laughs> in your movie then you could do that if you want but i mean come on you got denzel washington you got chris pratt Vincent D'Onofrio, and then you got that that Korean dude. What's his name? Lee Lee Byung Kim, I believe, is his name. It just seems like any one of those guys should be enough to take on Peter. So. <laughs> 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 like, you shouldn't need seven of them to deal with one guy on a horse. <laughs> no, that might, that's that's oversimplifying things, and I know that. Yes. You know, that facing, you know, and maybe he is just a giant weasel in this movie, and I hope so because he's got the face for it. Oh wow. It's <laughs> not quite like Christian Slater, like not like, you know, this guy's definitely a rat and don't ever pull a job with him because he's, you know, he's going to sell you out to the FBI. <laughs> like, like, it's not yeah. quite that face, but it's it's close. It's, yeah, it's, it's this is going to be the guy they talk to first and we're all going to do 15 years in federal prison. <laughs> so. Oh, that's great, man. Do you got anything else you want to say about this Magnificent Seven movie? No, I, I do really want to see it. So I, I hope yeah. so. I, I'm excited about it because, I, like I said, I, I saw the other ones, and this one's a different take. It's definitely similar. The story seems similar, but it's a different take on it. So it's interesting. We'll see how well it does and see if it can keep everything going because the other two are actually pretty good especially the original if you watch that one by akira kurosawa it's really really well done that's one of those criterion type movies so it's like super well done but it is a very old movie but um i guess that's it then we'll go ahead and take a break and then we'll get into this ben-hur movie story of Judah Ben-Hur, a prince falsely accused of treason by his adopted brother, an officer in the Roman army. After years at sea, Judah returns to his homeland to seek revenge, but finds redemption. Hmm. <laughs> wow, they should have made this years ago. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, right? <laughs> wow, that's... Uh, how are they just now getting around to this story? <laughs> this movie's directed by Tamora... Okay. Beck... Beckman Bedov, Beckman Bedov. I'm gonna have really fun uh, with the with the names on this mm, one. Yeah, <laughs> but he also directed Wanted and a Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, which is just such a weird set of movies that he, this guy has done. Mm. It's kind of strange. Starring Jack Huston as Judah Ben Hur, he's been in Boardwalk Empire and American Hustle. Toby Kebbell as Masala Severus, who was in Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, Wrath of Titans, and Fantastic Four. This guy... Oh. <laughs> I don't know which of those movies to jump all over. Well, Actually, I do. That's the thing. This guy, like, he clearly seems good enough to be able to do, to get into better movies. <laughs> Right. Okay. Hmm. But <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just like I don't know what to say about it. It's it's like Toby Kebbell, like he does such a great job, 
in like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. You know, because he was like, a, what? What was his name? Kuba or Kubo? Was he one of the apes? He was the bat. He was the the villain. Oh, Kuba. He was Kuba. So he was in the suit with you know Andy Circus. So he was like doing justice, like he was standing up against Andy Circus pretty well in that movie. So it's like such a weird thing where it's like, well, I know he's got some talent, but mm-hmm. it, right. it's like <laughs> he keeps end up in these like movies that are just like not that great at all. So it, it's very upsetting. <laughs> I think that's just kind of the thing that happens when you start being known for doing period pieces or, you know, like science fiction type stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, Ben-Hur, you know, because of the way that it's said and everything, I mean, it it is, you know, it's a different time. It's, you know, it's a period piece, but it's, it's a little bit out there, you know. Yeah, it is. So I I think he he kind of falls into that category. Uh, okay, here's what I have to say about Toby Kebbell. Okay, he's got my horse. Like I hate that <laughs> stupid movie. And like the, like that's the one thing. Like instead of like going after Jake Gyllenhaal, he just keeps yelling, "He's got my horse!" <laughs> oh my God, the Fantastic Four. It's I just am... the worst movie ever made. And what were what were they thinking? Well, you know uh, how I feel about that. What I were think they Brothers thinking? Grisby Let's do. is the worst movie ever made. But I don't know. Erroneous. What that. that what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what? When did there's that a lot one of, leap? There's a when lot did that of one leapfrog? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, is, no. There's a lot of bad movies. Fantastic Four is terrible. Don't get me wrong. It is the worst movie ever made. No. It's missing an entire act. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> for a two hundred million dollar movie to just all of a sudden jump from Act just, One to the end of Act Three, <laughs> there's just so many bad movies when you think back. No, like God, any Adam is... Sandler movie, and just like you know what so though, you know ones. that you know that those are going to be bad, and those aren't big budget movies. <laughs> I I guess if you want to add budget and into the mix, if if you're going to really nitpick, he's been on like a steady decline, so. <laughs> He's like following the curve, you know? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Brothers Grisby. You've never once mentioned, like, when we <laughs> when we start, like, that's so weird for you to pull that one out of the list. It's like, eh. I <laughs> it's hate like that It's still movie. kind of fun, though, but, I mean, it isn't ultraviolet. It's not like people asleep okay. in the... You, you know what? Right? You're right. Ultraviolet's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Ultra I want to really do a bad. list now. I want to. I want to. Just we won't talk any more about this, but like right. the ten worst, and maybe we can compare them, and that'll be our big celebration. All right, cool. For hitting fifty. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Rodrigo Santoro as Jesus. Okay. And he was in Love Actually, Rio, in three hundred. 300 okay yeah he wasn't oh he was the bat was he the bad guy in 300 yes okay yes Yes, he's the living god so to speak right yes Uh uh-huh so what is it with this like this guy keeps going after like deity parts then (laughs) so 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 to speak if that's the case yes like how do you tell people like how do you have the balls to say like i'm gonna like you know religion aside i'm gonna play jesus like i don't care what you believe like that takes a pair yeah yeah and how long did it take you because i was curious i how long did it take you to figure out that's who he was oh instantly you know it you instantly it, you because it instantly like the first scene the very first scene you see him in is where he's 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 like making a table or something so like you instantly are like oh you know, and it, well, well, we'll get into that later because that's one of my problems with this movie. <laughs> okay, all right. So we'll just get into that later. Uh, next up, we have okay. So oh boy, Nazani Banyadi as Esther. She was in Iron Man and the Next Three Days, and she was like the news reporter in Iron Man. There was like no way I would have remembered that at all. It's just like such a throwaway scene, mm. and, that, and that's all that she is in that movie. Ayelet Zurer 
as Naomi Ben Hur. She was in Man of Steel and the Daredevil Netflix series. Mm. <laughs> Pillow Aspeak as Pontius Pil- Pilot. I-, I don't know. I- Pontius Pilot? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Yes. Sorry. Oh my God, Pontius girl. Pilot. These names are just terrible for me. <laughs> but Pontius. he was uh, he was Euron Greyjoy in Game of Thrones, and he was also in Lucy. Ah, uh, okay. Sophia Black Delia as Terza Ben Hur. She was in uh, All My Children's Skins and Gossip Girl. And the last one we have here is Morgan Freeman as Ilderim, who was in Shawshank. Dur- Shawshank Redemption, Deep Impact, and Million Dollar Baby, who has just been in so much stuff. So everybody nice. knows who Morgan Freeman is. It's nice to see a familiar voice. Or nice, face, right? Whatever. <laughs> like, I was wondering see a why. Familiar face and hear right, a familiar voice. Now. Right, yeah. I was wondering why they, like, I guess I didn't realize he was in it. Like, I knew that and I forgot, but yeah. it started off with him narrating the movie. <laughs> And I was like, well, that's kind of yes. weird. But then he's in it. So I was like, well, all right. Usually when he does the narration, he's definitely not in the movie. Mm. <laughs> he does so yeah. many narr- narration roles. It's pretty crazy. But it's because you want to take his voice and make a cloud of it and sleep in it. Yes, you do. You want to bathe in it or <laughs> you know, fold it up into a sleeping bag and sleep yeah. under the stars. <laughs> While he tells you about the Higgs boson. <clears throat> <laughs> exactly. In a way that isn't confusing, but it is because it's the Higgs boson. Yeah. All right, Charles, let's go ahead and take our second break here, and then we'll go ahead and get into the nitty gritty of this Ben Hur movie. All right. <laughs> Right, Jones, now we're back for our corks and likes section, so let's go ahead and start with my corks. The first thing I want to say is I just got to say this once, <laughs> and, okay. then, and then well, and then I'll just leave it alone after that. But this is obviously one of those movies that really should not have been made because <laughs> ah yes, we've said this when we were talking about the trailer, and it's like this really shouldn't have been made. You really, this really movie really shouldn't have been made because it's a classic movie and you're just like, man, what the heck? Like, you really wanted them to just kind of leave this one alone, but, it, you know, it is what it is. And so it's just kind of what ended up happening. And I just wanted to say my little two cents in for that. <laughs> I agree. I, I don't disagree with that at all. Yeah. Like, you're not... No matter what you do, even if you make like a cohesive movie and everything, yes, it isn't going to be the original. No, it's not. So, so it's just one of those things. The next thing I want to say is that um, this movie to me seems extremely clunky. Come on. <laughs> do you have treats or something you can give them? No. No treats for the pups. No treats for the pups. I just have dog food. Mm. I don't know. What was I saying? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is clunky. Yes, the this movie's is, very clunky. This is already my favorite <laughs> podcast. Well, I, I know. I have these dogs here now, and they're like whining right now. <laughs> so it's terrible. So I apologize for that, but... The thing is, is because of its clunkiness, you have all these problems with, like... Hi, Fur. Come here. Um, this is, like, the longest recording ever. <laughs> 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 There's not a lot that's been said, but this is, like, the longest <laughs> recording ever. The only thing I can say is that the other thing that makes this movie super clunky is, like, the problem I have is, like, these Jesus scenes are just thrown together the only one that seems fluid is the very first one where he just happens to be talking to him while he's making like a a table or something where he's like sanding and filing that thing down and everything else is just kind of it's just like they just toss it in there and even though this story is mainly about the relationship between the two brothers it's it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, well, man, I really wish there was more 
involved with Jesus if they're going to do that. If they're going to to have it at all. Yeah, if they're going to have it at all, there needs to be more emphasis on him or or to really severely limit him or actually make it very subdued and more fluid through the story, which I think is how, if I remember correctly, is how the old one was. Yeah, um, and I don't... I don't recall him being in it that much, but yes, it, but he's there does tossed come. in kind of in like really in the old one. I remember he was tossed in very fluidly, and so it wasn't as as big of a deal. I mean, the th- I guess the and more to your point, the part to me that's chunky because because they don't um, uh, clunky. Sorry, because they don't really get into it. Is you're following Ben Hur. Yes. And Ben and Ben Hur is not going down that path. He is out for blood. Yes, he is. And although he meets his wife again after spending five years as a galley slave and you know, like fighting his his way back to where he can take on his you know, his his adopted brother and, and try to get some revenge for his family. Yeah. You know, that's obviously those are two totally different messages. Yes. Like, it is. So uh, to me, he doesn't ever and like he gets saved at the end, but he's already gone through, you know, he's already. Well, he's already gone revenge, through with right? the revenge, I mean, yeah. essentially. Yeah. So, it, so it's kind of that weird. to me is the thing that's a little bit weird. And, and I understand that a lot of this was in. You know, it was it was reshaped. It wasn't exactly the same thing. Yes. You know, the uh-huh. plot isn't exactly the same as the original yeah. story because they actually made them brothers instead of friends, and, and yes. there are some other things that are different. Uh, but I just thought it was a little weird that, you know, his like he's not really being pulled, you know, back onto the right path. Like like he almost starts apathetic, and you think he kind of gets it, but then he spends all this time as a slave yes you know he like he shelters this boy and like he does the right thing and then he gets punished for doing the right thing yes he does so like that to me i i guess from as far as a character development standpoint it's tough to just say oh he gets you know baptized in the rain or whatever yeah and, Mm -hmm. and like that's his you know, that isn't a character arc to me. Yes, it, it doesn't so. seem like it is at all. So the other other thing I have in this is because of the, and this is kind of the same type of problem, but it's like you have this, uh, this real like clunky pacing that goes through the whole thing. And it's just like the weirdest freaking thing. And it's like there's certain scenes like the scenes with the family that are just like, kind of tossed in like when he like do we need the extra sequence with his family having leprosy kind of thing like what, you which know? they don't even explain right no I mean, they don't even explain it so it's just tossed in there and you're just like man like what the heck is uh going on here with this story and there's just a lot of little scenes like that that just really messes up the pacing of the movie so it makes it feel a lot longer than it actually is and so it's 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 kind of just an unfortunate thing with this movie um that is actually all my quirks so what do you got man okay well i mean those are some legitimate gripes uh and really mine were more nitpicky and that's you know they they changed what they did with masala and yes. I and I almost wish that they would have maybe done something even more different than what they did. Like it wasn't enough of a change for for me. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they're raised as brothers, and to me, that's like a that's a tougher. It like it's tougher for me to to think that he that he came back after going to war for Rome. Yeah. And that he came back and that he was just willing to throw his family under the bus like that. That was a little bit of a tougher sell to me. And I didn't have an issue with any of the acting performances. I mean, that's like a nitpicky yeah, plot I, thing. I really didn't have any problems with the performances either. I thought that I thought that they were fine for what they were. Right. For what's there. I, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, you know, it, this really irritated me, but the little shit that fired the arrow and oh, then ran away geez. like a coward. Yeah. That really bothered, like, I mean, I was seething over that. He should have, you know, it's, and that's one of those things that stayed with me, and he ends up on a, yes. you know, getting crucified at the yes. end anyway. Yes, he but, ends up getting crucified. But I didn't end. like that I had to wait, to be honest <laughs> with you. You know, it just was one of those things where I was like, that little jackass kid, <laughs> like, yeah. did, like, you know, had the balls to do that, and then didn't even stay there, and... In the original, it was just like ceiling tiles or something, and it wasn't yeah. a conscious pilot. It was someone else who actually, I think, ended up dying as a result. So, I'm, yeah, you that know, I mean, obviously, that's right. obviously like an assassination is like a bigger deal. And, and you know, I just, and this kind of, it just bothered me that. You know, again, you mentioned the whole leprosy thing. I'm not sure that needed. I almost would have would have preferred them just that, being dead. Them just being dead, or right? Masala <laughs> doing something else entirely different with them. Yeah, right. And, and like, here's where it gets really clunky. You have to remember that there's this other character. Yes. Who Ben Hur screws over, and so he gets like demoted and gets casted out because he gets taken hostage. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. You know, then he, for some reason, like, after that, ended up taking care of the family, like... Yes. Mm -hmm. by Like, to me, that doesn't make any sense yeah, at it, all. Because he doesn't, doesn't have any, any motivation to do any of those things. No, he doesn't. So, and then, um, and this is, this is a real big one for me. Listening to that damn same drum for five years <laughs> as a galley slave, like, damn... Yeah, that would be the most annoying thing. Like I, and I feel like those guys are like you have to feed them enough so that they keep going. Yes. So they're in incredible shape and they aren't chained up all the time. It just seems to me like during one of these battles they could all just freaking escape. Yeah. You know, but five years, oh man. That's it's just such a long time. <laughs> right, and it was longer even. From the original, you yeah, know, he wasn't, and he and he actually earned his his freedom, and in this one, he sort of just escapes. Yes, yeah. So you know, that's it for me as as far as quirks. Okay, well, go. I got um, I have like a couple likes. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to those. The thing that's funny is the thing that's probably exciting about this movie is the. Uh, probably to me was the like the two major scenes which was like the galley scene where they i thought that was just an exciting scene that was just yeah. great and entertaining mm -hmm. and i really enjoyed it the only problem is is that like that act almost like stops the movie dead and then and then it like ramps back up during that sequence but that's just such a great sequence with the galley i really enjoyed all of that you know imagine had they had they kicked the movie off with that scene instead i know right i you think know. that would have made it a totally different movie at that point in time you're right and maybe we would have got more of more of like a a development part to it because then we could have done we started with that and then kind of went back and then got and then caught back up to that time period, which is what they did anyway. Which, well, yeah, but they started with the chariot races, so. which is does which doesn't make any sense though. No, it doesn't because then you because then you also know that he can survives everything else. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, get that now. <laughs> well, thanks for that, just let, Bob. Just okay. let it go. Just, just let it go. And this one will be mature. Oh man. <laughs> uh, but you know, so you know he survives till everything. So I actually hate when movies start it that way. If you're gonna start it that way, start it with know, a bang. It, yeah, it needs to be with a with a bang and not with like a weird scene where like, wait a minute, is this the end here or something <laughs> in the middle? And then yeah. and then when you look back on it, you're like, well. So he survives everything else. You yeah. Know. So, sorry, did you have any other likes? or? Um, the only other like I had was, uh, like I said, it's like the little vignettes were the best scenes. And the galley scene was a really good sequence. And I like the chariot scene, too. They actually the, made the chariot yeah, scene the, super exciting. The chariots were really well done. In fact, there was only one issue I had, and that was one the 
they had this horse jump into the audience. Oh, but that was a terrible scene. Everything else <laughs> was just incredible. It they, was. They filmed it in a really cool way. Yes. They really thought everything through when it came to these chariots. Scenes. Yes, they did. And, you know, I've never really, you know, in, you know, they didn't have the technology really to do what they did in the original Ben Hur. Yeah. But I've never really seen a scene like, you know, that scene was so well filmed. It was. And well thought out that it just, you know. It and was it an, should be. Because, yeah. like, that's the thing that kind of pushed yes. that, the, the original over the top to get, you know, Academy Awards and stuff. Like, that's kind right. of a part of it. Because of so much time and energy they put into those chariot scenes, that's really the shiny example and why it makes it such a classic movie that's done so well and that's that's like and so this one then putting that time in it on this one i thought was good and i think that helps the movie a lot and yeah uh, and it isn't just green screen hell for the most part either i mean no. they, just, they really did a fantastic job with those scenes yeah man really good yeah and those are my only likes you know i thought the acting was really solid in this movie i it I, was. I thought the movie as a whole now you're right about the the pacing and some stuff being out of whack yeah uh, you know i thought the movie as a whole if it wasn't ben her if it was something else it probably would have been just fine yes so it, it's weird for me because it seems like you know this particular filmmaker put all this care into it but it was like oh it was for it was almost for not you know because yes there's no way it's ever going to be that it isn't going to be the same thing no, and i know not. that that that's what we we keep coming back to yeah which i was like, trying to avoid but you know, it, it's hard <laughs> couldn't you have done the same thing with with something similar or or just like totally you know yeah like a different idea to like a different story uh, you know just like in the same setting i would you know, definitely like think you could do piece. something so that it's not actually been her. I think it, it would have gotten some more love out of, out of the movie. Speaking of which, check out this awesome Ben Hur lens flare I have. I know, here. you got a nice lens flare going out of your camera like, there. <laughs> <laughs> Something just fell. <laughs> this is great. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, so I, I thought the acting and the. Uh, the chariot races, and, and I think that's it for me, buddy. Okay, so we're kind of on the same page here then. So I guess um, I guess we'll go ahead and rate this thing. So I, I think there's some sequences to this movie, and because it's kind of clunky, and it almost seems like there's just all these little vignettes instead of a fluid, cohesive movie, it almost seems like a school play version of the original. <laughs> Right? <laughs> but That's it's... mean, but not inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not in like... It's not like it's in a bad acted way or bad special effects or visual, you know, or bad costume or bad sets kind of way. I mean, it's just... You know, the money was, was spent. They, yes. they spent all their money <laughs> they spent to their money. make the movie yes so with all that said <laughs> i i the only thing i can say is because of the existence of the original i would just say you know what i'm gonna go ahead and give it a rent it i'm gonna say rent it yeah uh you know i thought i you know i actually liked the movie and my complaints were not anywhere near as you know they just didn't have the same foundation that yours did yeah, and once I heard it, okay, I, yeah, I I agree with what you're saying, but I am gonna give it a run it because I actually didn't hate this movie and I thought I was going to. It's so it is not that bad of a movie. It it's, is it is better than an eleven million dollar opening for sure. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure, it's better than that. Yeah, it, it doesn't it deserve that. I think a lot of that has to do with the anger towards them doing the movie in general because Correct. it's been her and i think even the critics are hating on the movie that much because of that reason it's like they're being ultra harsh with it because of the the original like classic you know charlton Heston. it's an it's an original it's a religious movie it's going to be tough 
Yeah. To, you know, it, it's just, that's going to be tough. Yeah, it's a it tough really season. It really is. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's better than, I think, what it's been making, for sure. But, yeah, I, know, I think th- so, too. This is not a, you know, $11 million opening weekend. That doesn't, no. that doesn't actually drive with the movie that they made. No, so. it doesn't. It's, it's actually pretty... It's a little disappointing for uh, for the studio, I'm sure, and for the director and the actors, <laughs> I'm sure. All right, let's go ahead and sign out then. So if anybody wants to contact us, we have our home on the web, halfpastpodcast.com. Like us on Facebook. Rate us on iTunes and Google Play. We're on Stitcher and Libsyn. Email us at halfpastcast at gmail.com. That's halfpastcast at gmail.com. Tweet us at <laughs> Half Past Podcast. <laughs> thank you for listening and thank you for your support. We are going to take our summer break. So after 50, we're taking a summer break. Our next movie will be Magnificent Seven, which is in, what, September. So it's next month. In the middle of next month, I think it's September 23rd. So we'll have that one out for that weekend. I'm and a little that concerned one's good. with this April that you wrote here on my thingy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny I was like, you what say that. April, <laughs> because I, I, you know, I read it right now, and I'm like, wow, did I write that? I must have been super like, tired. April, what are we do? What are we doing? Are we skipping <laughs> Strange and Rogue One <laughs> and just going straight to April? <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. I like how you call me out on it. I must have been super tired when I wrote this. It's just terrible. (laughs) A summer break until April. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, man. That is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) This is the Half Past Podcast. I'm Graham Ricks. Jones. Can I get a bark from the dogs? No, not no, there. No, okay. oh well. All See right. you next flick. Oh, 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 oh. oh.